I'm Lucas from Wolfire Games. A while back we asked our community for questions for a Q&A, and in this video we'll be answering some of them. Here today to answer those questions are David, who is the founder and main programmer at Wolfire Games, Merlin, who is the producer on the project, Anton, who is working on the music in Overgrowth, and me, Lucas, who is currently working as a level designer. Alright, let's get to it! Uh, Farouk, also known as at Ultron90 on Twitter, asks, "What are your current go current goals for 2017?" We want to finish the Overgrowth campaign and call that the release candidate Overgrowth 1.0. Hopefully, we can do that within about a month. Is that a promise? <gasps> no. Okay. <laughs> That's a target. Cool. Do we have any other plans after, like, after Overgrowth already? Um, after we hit Release Candidate, we're going to see how much resources we have to continue and what our other options are. We might add bonus things to Overgrowth or move on to a new project. If there are resources, would you consider adding more campaigns or DLC kinds of updates? I'd certainly consider it and see what people are asking for and what they want and how hard it looks like different things would be. Would you would you ever consider like a an outside resource to do some of that? The example I have in mind is um, Amnesia. Um, they did their initial game and then they released a sequel uh, using the developers called The Chinese Room. Um, mm -hmm. So it was like a totally different studio made new content. Would you ever consider something like that? Uh, yeah. If The Chinese Room wanted to make an expansion for Evergrowth, I'd jump on that. <laughs> because they're kind of awesome. A classic question from Roby, at Roby underscore FH on Twitter. Um, they ask, will online multiplayer be a thing at some point? I think Jeff would kill me if I said yes or even maybe. But I'll say we do have support for sockets in the game, and we have an unofficial multiplayer mod which is functional. And it would certainly be fun to work on at some point. But no promises. No promises of official support, at least. So this is a question that we have talked about before on the blog and things like that. Um, Sumit Das, at Sumit Das on Twitter, asks, I remember Lugaru had this quad quadrupedal sprint. Will that be brought back too? The animal run was really cool. And it was good for catching enemies that are running away. But right now we're thinking of just not having enemies that run away. In that case, we don't need the quadrupedal run. So it's on the list of possible expansions if we have extra time and resources, but it's not on the priority list. Are there any other Lugaru-based um, things that you would still like to add to the game, like weapons breaking or um, the wall kick? I know the wall kick is something I kind of miss. Yeah, and the air grab. We can grab jumping characters by the foot and bring them down. Yeah. Those are all things that would be cool. But I'm trying to focus on adding new things that are unique to Overgrowth more than porting over everything possible from the garden. You also have a few other races to think about besides just wolves and rabbits too. So it might turn out a little different because you have those other races. Yeah, we're figuring out rats and dogs and cats and what they're going to do. At HTTYD underscore NF on Twitter asks, will the story of Overgrowth take over Lugaru's story? Take over. Be a continuation of, I suppose. Yeah, it'll continue where the Lugaru story left off, more or less. That's currently what we're working on. Uh, I guess there isn't that much more to say on that. Like, yeah, <laughs> we don't want to spoil it, so... <laughs> um, PA, also known as at 
Fadesalami. I ask, why did you remove the WebKit-based UI? We no longer have a web developer on the team. That was Jeff, and he's been working on Humble Bundle full time. So I wanted to switch to something that I could control more directly and more quickly. So I switched to this C++ based immediate mode GUI option. So Max and I can add and remove features much more quickly. And it has been really showing as well in the game as a level designer on the team. We have much more nicer tools now for everything and everything is much faster and easier to do. So it's been going really well, I think, with this new Dear Imgui library. It's definitely really fast for him to add that stuff to, relatively speaking. So I think that it was the right choice. Jamie Williams, also known as at Jamman88 on Twitter, asks, was the time it took to develop the editor offset by faster game development? Or would a more basic editor have been faster overall? Well, we really only actually started on level content, like three months ago. Sort of. It's hard to say anything about faster game development on an eight or nine year project. But I would say it's easier to make levels in the upper growth editor than in other editors I've used. I mean, we have gotten some feedback, in, including from some of our level artists, that that's true, um, that it was a little easier to pick up and um, run with than some of the other tools that they've used. But whether they're faster in this or that, I'm not a, it's, you know, we'd have to build it in both to find out we're not doing that, so. Neil, aka at your pal Neil on Twitter asks, have you any development or design books you'd recommend for indie developers? I like rules of play for overall game theory and just thinking about it in kind of a global way that includes all kinds of games like sports and board games and video games and mechanical games and everything and how it fits into people's lives. I also like Game Engine Architecture by one of the lead Naughty Dog engineers. That one's very modern. I also like the YouTube series about programming by Casey Muratori, like Handmade Hero, or John Blow has pretty good ones, or the BitSquid guys, now Stingray, who make the Stingray engine for Autodesk, have a good YouTube series explaining all their coding philosophies. So those are good if you want to write your own engine, which is probably a bad idea. But if you're going to do that, those are good resources now. Well, it's a bad idea if you're going to do it to sell a game, probably, because there are other good engines. But I think it's a good idea if you want, if you think it's fun or if you want to learn how to do it. Yeah, or if you care about performance, even if you're using another engine, it's really good to know how it works how the engine relates to the hardware. There's some really accessible game design resources just for thinking about game design, like the Extra Credits show or Idle Thumbs, even. It's a good podcast by game designers where they sometimes talk about random stuff, but sometimes they talk insightfully about game design. Aaron Signal is another one that's kind of like Extra Credits about game design. Andrew Kim, at Kim Andre on Twitter, asks, will Overgrowth have its own campaign? Are there plans for a new game? Would you change the development of Overgrowth if you could? Overgrowth will definitely have its own campaign. Um, I have a lot of possible ideas for new games. I have a giant list that I usually add a couple ideas to every day and have throughout my whole life. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's a lot of game ideas. Um, if I could change anything about overgrowth development, we only really started on the content of the campaign in earnest a few months ago. And the game could have been done faster and probably higher quality if I had started doing that from the beginning. So we could have been iterating on it over this whole time. But it took us a while to find our focus and transition from experimenting with technology and mechanics over to gameplay content and levels and such. 
Crystal Warrior on the Wolfire forums asks, when will the Blender scripts be updated to the latest version? I'm actually working on that right now, um, sort of in my spare time, because I'm not officially a programmer on this uh, project in any way. But um, I'm done, for the most part, with the um, skeleton export. Um, and I'm trying to get the import working, even though it's probably not a workflow people are going to use very often. But I figure we might as well update the script. Uh, and then there's two two more major ones that I uh, will be working on probably later this week when I you know my off off hours when I'm not at work. Timbles asks, will Overgrowth's campaign be set on Luguru? It's at least partly set on the Garden Island. Timbles on the Wolfire forums asks, how will medium slash easy difficulty play? Any plans and or points of comparison? Right now, I'm experimenting with global settings that can make it easier or harder. The most obvious one is just changing the overall gameplay speed. A lot of people find overgrowth just way too fast, which is something I found in Lugaru also. So I'm looking at just changing gameplay speed to like 80 or 90% and increasing the margin of error for the timing on blocks and throws and dodges. And that could be one way we could have an easier mode. I think just from my own experience that having the margin of error expanded when it's slower is important. Because currently I know I take a lot of audio cues from when the characters make sounds when they attack to know when to time my blocks and throws. And so if that so a lot of times there have been people who intentionally set characters slow and the I always block too soon because the character is taking too long to actually perform their attack. So um, it, it will have to be balanced across both of those elements, I think. Yeah, we'll have to do a lot of playtesting on different people. Yeah. And I, I do think getting a lot of this feedback from new players, talking about the speed being too fast and difficulty being high, is a is an interesting concern because so many of us have been playing the game for so many years. You know, it's been in essentially some form of playable state for seven years or something, right? So, um, you know, what feels easy to us is not necessarily easy to everybody. It'd be nice to have the easiest mode be accessible to people who are not experienced with video games or have some kind of mobility issues. Mm. So, so almost to the sort of casual gamer level. Yeah, I'm thinking of like if we had a bunch of difficulty levels. Like we definitely want at least like an easier and a harder one. Right. But ideally, I'm thinking we'd have like accessible, casual, hardcore, and master or something like that. Master would be the current one. Accessible would be like if the user has one hand or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just difficult to actually do the, the actions required. And then casual would be if you just want to play through the story and feel like a badass and not worry as much about getting really good at it. And hardcore would be somewhere in between. So it's like more like other hardcore games. Because right now it's somewhat hard. It's more like Dark Souls level. Uh, some of the feedback we've gotten about difficulty um, I've also seen is a result of people just not playing the tutorial. And I'm not saying that they you know, should have to go to a different mode. But we're actually working on trying to improve the tutorial, um, or at least be able to introduce how to play the game a little bit more in the game itself. And I think that will help a little bit, but we'll still have easier modes for the game, as my understanding. Yeah. Agasom on Reddit asks, were you ever on the verge of abandoning the game? Definitely considered it at certain points. But really didn't want to disappoint anyone who pre-ordered. So I wanted to keep going as long as we possibly could. And people kept buying it. So we kept on being able to continue. So I just kept on going. 
do you feel like you would have been more motivated on a larger team like the situation you're in now where there's more of a um, group of people with a potentially clearer goal in at the end or did you find that it was easier to work a little more on your own would that have, like would that have changed your your view during game development it's definitely helpful having more people so we can maintain momentum and have more of kind of a support system like i just got sick and had to take the last week off and when I'm working by myself, it's easy for that to kind of spiral into a vicious cycle where like, I don't really know where to start again. But now, like other people can keep on doing things. And having a distributed team like we do, we can't have the flu take out like everyone because we like, cross continents. So that'd be a weird coincidence. It's a lot easier just to jump back in where I left off instead of like cycling into despair or something. That's good. There's the least amount of cycling into despair we can have, <laughs> I think, is good. <laughs> it's not usually very good for progress. So, so I guess that, that sort of asks the question, if, if, I, if I'm a new developer or a young developer, would you recommend trying to make a game on my own or would you recommend trying to get a team together? You know, do they participate in game jams where it's a limited amount of development time or do they um, take that one idea that they know is just going to be so great and, and make it till it happens or what would you recommend to people? I think making games by yourself is important just to get a grasp of all the skills involved. And if you're starting out, you won't have a budget, so you can't hire people. So you'd be working with partners, and partners have their own difficulties and possible like, political drama that can be distracting. So I think it's good to start out by yourself and have some kind of development community that you can join. For me, it was iDev Games back when that was a bigger thing. I'm not totally sure what the game dev communities are like these days. Probably something on like Gichio. I'm not sure if Tick Source is still big in that arena. Or Ludum Dare or anything like that. You definitely need some kind of audience because that can provide the support and the momentum if you get sick or whatever. Some obstacle comes up. It's good to have people giving feedback and to be accountable to. Halsoid on the Wolfire forums asks, it seems like the OG campaign is freaking huge based on the amount of level files. Just how large will it be and how long after Luguru is it planned to be set? AKA, is Turner still pissed? <laughs> I don't think Turner will ever stop being pissed. <laughs> I think that's just his permanent state at this point. Like. After you kill the first couple hundred people, I don't know if you can really go back from that to a very calm state of mind, though. We'll see. It's set not super long after, and yeah, it's several times longer than the Lugaro campaign, at least. Do we know, like, the numbers in that? Like, how long do we... Because Lugaru is sort of hard to say, like, how long does it take to, take to play through Lugaru, the campaign? Because if you have played through the game, you can play through it very fast. But if you haven't played the game, you're probably going to have to take at least like a couple of days to get through it on the hardest difficulty for sure. Yeah, I was trying to quantify it by looking at like the number of encounters of different types. Usually dual, duels and stealth levels are the two main types. Like whether the enemies start out aware of you or not. And I think Lugaro had about eight of each. And... The Overgrowth campaign has like 20 of each year, a bit more, plus platforming levels, which didn't even exist. And that is the end of the Q&A. To find out how you can take part in the Wolfire community, check out the links in the description. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.